Hey guys, it's Ivan, and today we have built an extremely fun live performance system, which we'll use to make a melodic techno track. We'll show its features by recreating a track by Tail of Us called Nova. The system is structured around our sequencer ground control, which can play a drum and three melodic voices. The drums will be played from the Queen of Pentacles over here, which we also loaded with some extra 99 sample ROMs found on the internet. Without further ado, let's start by connecting all of the trigger outputs to the Queen of Pentacles. So we'll have the kick over here. Snare is the second one. Clap is the third. And we'll use 5-6 to trigger sample number 2 and sample number 3. And we'll also connect the stereo output using a stereo cable to the first channel on cockpit. As for the kick drum, to make it more punchy, we'll take it out on the separate individual output, feed it to the Milky Way that is running a compressor algorithm, and from the Milky Way, we'll go to the second channel on the first cockpit one you. Last but not least, we'll take out the trigger that is going to the kick drum, split it using a stackable cable, and feed it to the sidechain input on the cockpit. That is pretty much all for the drums, let's move on to our melodic voices. The melodic voices over here are designed around the ghost modules, which provide the VCAs, filter and effects. The Godspeed and Furst generator oscillators are used as sound sources and finally Airstreamer 4 envelope to control the amplitude and the filter cutoff for each of the voices. The first voice on the bottom left will be used for the arpeggios and for this we'll be using the sine wave output that can be processed by the wave folder on the Godspeed. This way we can go from super clean to harsh sounding tones using just one knob. So let's patch the sine wave folded output to the ghost. Then we'll connect the 0 to 5 volt envelope to the VCA and the bipolar envelope to control the filter cutoff. Let's connect the pitch output from track number 1 to the Godspeed pitch input and the gate output from track number 1 to trigger the envelope. Next we'll connect the stereo outputs to the second channel on the cockpit. And that is our first voice complete. The second voice will be our expressive lead, and since we wanted to have a bit more bite, we'll use both oscillators' pure sawtooth outputs on the Furster generator. By using both oscillators, we can achieve unison sound, and by feeding each of the oscillators to left and right inputs on the Ghost, we can make it stereo. So let's connect the first sawtooth to the left input, and the second one to the right input. As usual, we'll be using the Airstreamer 4 over here to control the VCA and filter. So the unipolar output will control the VCA and the bipolar will control the filter cutoff. Now let's connect the pitch from the track number 2 on the ground control to both of the oscillators by using a splitter cable again, like so. And as with the other voices, we'll connect the stereo outputs to the third channel on the cockpit mixer. We'll also connect the gate output from track number 2 to trigger our envelope. Now to make sure everything is working, we can press track number 1 and test if we can hear something. First voice is working, let's check out the second one. <music> Lastly, we need a solid low and bass. For this, we'll use a similar voice structure as our ARP voice over here, but we'll use an even odd output with normal sub oscillator and feed it to the ghost for heavy filtering. Let's connect the even odd to the ghost input the unipolar envelope to the VCA and bipolar envelope to filter cutoff. Now let's connect the pitch output from track number 3 
to the pitch input of our bass voice, but instead of using the gate output on this track, we'll actually be using the running order to trigger the bass every three steps. To do that, let's connect the track one output to the trigger input on the envelope. And let's connect the clock output from the ground control to the clock input on the running order, as well as the reset output to reset our sequence. Now that the voices are set up, let's have a look how our one new row is configured. First of all, these two cockpits are linked on the back using DuPont cables, so anything that goes into this cockpit will go into this one and will also go to the Golden Master and straight to the TRS outputs on the back. The main reason we're using two cockpits over here is because we are splitting the kick drum from the Queen of Pentacles from the individual output and then we're going into the Milky Way for some extra compression. This way we can achieve a powerful yet clean kick without going into the distortion. Now let's move on to the Golden Master. On the Golden Master we'll enable the compressors for each of the bands and especially increase the low band to have a club ready sound. So let's enable them. We can go to the red mode, increase the mid, high and low. Also I will enhance the mid and high band stereo mid side spread while making the low band more mono. So to do that we'll go to the purple mode, enhance the mid, the high and the low end will reduce to the maximum. This way we can have a wide sounding mix but all of the low frequencies will be centered. With the patch ready we can start creating the sequences and let's start with the drum pattern. First we have a kick drum which is a four on the floor pattern. To do that we can just press record press one active step, three rests, and we can start the sequence. Now we can tweak the compressor. To give the sound a bit more punch without going into the distortion. Next we'll create the pattern for the hi-hat, right and the snare drum. So let's start the sequence. That's our open hi-hat. Now we can start adding the right using the same pattern. And we have the snare drum. Now what I would like to do is also add some of the delay to the hi-hats to create more groove. So let's hear how that sounds, we we'll press the button, let's mute the snare, let's shorten the ride. To apply effects to the hi-hat, we put the switch to the right and add the dry wet. But also, I will clock sync the delay to do that. We have to press this button until the LED blinks. Then we can split the clock out and feed it to this input. So as you can hear without. And we can add it. With the drum pattern ready, let's focus on the arpeggio sequence using the first voice over here. First of all, we'll have to tune the oscillator. To do that, we just press the A note and press the tune button. The sequence goes like this. So we can just record it using the SH-101 mode by pressing record and then entering the steps. Now we can press play. We can start adding some reverb and some delay.
I would also like to clock sync the delay of our arpeggio, so to do that I will just unplug the clock from the running order, split it, send it to the second voice which we will get to, and use another cable to send this clock to the first voice. Now let's hear how this sounds. We can play around with the wave folding. With some resonance. It's nice to add some distortion for extra bite. Now let's make the pattern for our main lead voice. And first of all, we'll have to tune our force generator by looking at these two LEDs. So first let's press the A note and try to make it so that both of them light up. Now they're perfectly in tune, but we would like to also detune them slightly for unison feel. Now let me show you how you can play the main lead pattern. It goes like this. To record it, we'll have to chain two patterns as the sequence is more than 64 steps. So to do that, first we have pattern A, which is 64 steps. Then we have pattern B, which is also 64 steps. To chain them, all you have to do is press track 2, A and B. Now let's arm the recording by pressing tempo record and start the sequence. Finally, we have the bass line left, which is fairly simple as it's just two notes, but we will use one of the clocked running order outputs to trigger the bass line envelope, creating a sort of Euclidean rotating groove. Let's first create a three-step sequence on the running order to trigger the envelope for the bass voice. So to do that, we'll flip the switch to the left, create one active step and three rests. Now, if we start the sequence, we should hear our bass line voice being triggered by the running order. As you can hear now, we're out of key. The first note will be this. To create the sequence, we'll have to divide the speed of the track by 2. To do that, we'll have to press track 3 and 1 8. Now we can arm the recording and start the sequence. Now let's have some fun and play around with this patch. And if you're enjoying these tutorials, press the like button and subscribe not to miss our future videos. Let's fire up the sequencer and enjoy the sounds.
As you can see, you don't need a wall of modulars to create music, and for most tracks, having a few proper modules with a solid drum kit and three melodic voices is the way to go. This system gives plenty of hands-on control, making music production and performance fun and effective. This system will be on our display during the Sonar 2023 days, as well as in our showroom this summer. As always, the project files for the ground control are available in the description, and if you have any questions, let us know in the comments and we will get back to you ASAP. That is all for today, have fun making music and we will see you next time.